Hey everyone, it's Cassie. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I am bringing you a Parachute Slimline card that seemed to be the winner from this last haul. So we're going to be using the Parachute Stamp Set by Trinity Stamps along with the matching die. Isn't that kitty so adorable? So excited to ink him up. And then we're also going to be using the Wonky Stitched Wilderness die. I thought this die was just so great. Um, I love the stitching of the outline, but also the dies on the inside are just fabulous. And I'll show you what I did with that because so many people were curious about what those clouds actually did. So I'll show you that in a second. We're also going to be using some distress inks in various colors, sponge sugar, dried marigold, squeezed lemonade, milled lavender, and dusty concord. And I went ahead and cut out a bunch of pieces already. So I cut out the mountains already and I used the wonky stitched border around the mountains because that's going to go at the very bottom of my card. And then I also cut out the little mountain tops, which make a world of difference on those mountains. They're cute anyway, but, and then those are the two mountains that are going to go in the background. And I just used some cardstock that I had in my stash for those. And then here I have out of some Bristol Smooth, I cut out the wonky stitched die uh, out of that. And then you just put the clouds on top and this is what it does. This is what I was talking about. So it won't cut out the clouds, but it will give you this cute little stitched outline of those. And all the stars and the fireworks or whatever in the background, they will do the same thing. So now I'm just going to kind of gauge where I want those mountains to be because I'm going to do some ink blending, which is why I used Bristol Smooth cardstock. I've got my Trinity brushes. I have one for every color. And so I'm going to start with some sponge sugar at the very bottom. And then I'm going to bring in some dried marigold. And I'm going to keep these two out two at a time trying not to get the lids mixed up, uh, but I'll put down some dried marigold, kind of seeing where those mountains are going to lay, and then I realize I need more spun sugar, so I'm going to bring that up a little bit higher, and then I'll bring in that dried marigold. But you can see the clouds pretty well, but however, once I start going over the top of those more with color, it really makes them pop. All right, now we're going to move on to some squeezed lemonade. That'll be the next color. I was trying to choose colors right next to each other that wouldn't, when they mixed, they wouldn't make like mud. So that's why we went to dried marigold into the squeezed lemonade. And then we're going to go back into some spun sugar. So uh, we'll pull out that spun sugar again. And like I said, trying to make sure that I don't get those lids all mixed up. So we'll bring that up a little bit more and then we're going to bring in the milled lavender next, which is just a very light purple. It's a very pale purple color and it's great because this one I can just use the purple and then uh, the purple Trinity brush that I have, Trinity Stamps brush, and then I will also use that same brush for the dusty Concord at the top. So I like how that's coming together and I was just trying to make I guess a sunset uh, and you know you guys know if you've watched me at all I like to mix it up I like to grab different kinds of colors to make different kinds of sunsets because you know variety right and so we'll just bring in that dusty Concord and when I'm happy with that I want to do some splatter so this is an aqua pigment by Brutus Monroe this is called a sunflower and it is not just like a typical aqua pigment this one has some shimmer to it so it's almost like a goldish color very pale gold so I'm sprinkling that all over that background splattering that and it's just gonna leave this nice subtle gold splatters all over that background so I'll set that off to the side to dry and we'll move on to our stamping so I'll put my little kitty inside of my mini misty and stamp that on to some alcohol friendly cardstock and stamp it down with some alcohol friendly ink and then we'll pull out the colors that we want. I'm going to start with some B34. That's going to be my lightest color. And we're going to try and match that parachute to those to the dusty Concord and the milled lavender background, as well as with the mountains. That way it'll tie everything together. So my next color is B04. And it's interesting how B04 is darker than B34, or BV. These are BVs. So B0, BV04 is darker than BV34. So I'll kind of blend those out a little bit. And then our darkest shade is BV08. So I'll bring that color in just for some little pops. And then uh, kind of shade that out on that quilted top, which I thought was really cute. I've seen the design team for Trinity Stamps do some really cute things with this little stamp. 
All right, now we're gonna move on to coloring the kitty. And I know that he is not drawn to be like a Siamese, but I just had to do it anyway. So we're gonna put down a wash of E50 all over our little kitty. And like I said, I've seen some adorable things done with this. And I'm gonna bring in my typical colors for Siamese, which would be E84. I'm gonna make him more like a seal point. So he's gonna look more like my little Max. And I know y'all are missing the boys. You want to see them a little bit more often. I may just have to, um, I don't know, film them doing what they're usually doing during the day, which is actually napping. So <laughs> they are night owls these days. So, uh, and yeah. So I'm going to bring in some E87 for my darker color, which kind of makes his face get lost a little bit, but I will fix that. But it, it's true that in a true seal point, like my Max, he his face is almost that's why his eyes are so blue i think because his face is almost with that dark color it uh, kind of disappears his eyes almost disappear in there but then he opens his eyes and he has that bright blue so pretty all right now i'm going to take that e50 and i'm going to blend that out just a little bit more well after i color the straps the bv08 and then use the bv34 on the buckle so I'll bring in that E50 once again, just to blend out the face just a tiny bit. And then I'm going to grab the matching die and we'll run this through my die cutting machine after I've taped it down. But I love that the matching die will cut out the little pieces in between each of the, the straps or the, the lines for the parachute. It's just genius, I love it. So there he is. And I'm gonna grab a black Secura Jelly Roll pen here in a second to bring out his eyes and his nose a bit more. That'll make them pop even more. And then I'll set him off to the side to dry because that's gonna need a second. For the sentiment, we're gonna grab some of the same color paper that we used for the mountains. And I don't know exactly what kind this is. It's probably some old Stampin' Up! stuff that I had in my stash. I hang on to everything, it seems, even with moving as much as we do. All right, I, it is super important when you're using these stamps that have matching dies to go around the sentiments that you are keeping it as straight as possible. So the best thing to do is just to kind of set it on your glass mat or your, your surface or whatever and let it just kind of go naturally and then pick it up with your block. And then I had used my magic powder bag over the top of that, stamped that with some embossing ink, and then covered that with some alabaster embossing powder. And now I'm running that through my die cutting machine. And there they are, all the little pieces ready to go. Now we're gonna attach the mountain tops to the mountains, and I just love how these totally transform those mountains. These are so cute, these adorable little stitched tops to the mountains. It just gives this card a whole nother something something that I just love. And then we'll do the same thing with the little pale mountains for the background. And you'll notice that my mountains aren't the same size, but that's okay because they're gonna go in the background. So I'll just place those back there and glue them down. I'm not really putting any, well, I'm not putting any dimension on this card, actually. There's no foam tape that I use, which is kind of surprising, but it's, I think that's one of the things I love about this wilderness die because you can use those stitches, the stitch dies, and create this whole scene without adding a lot of bulk. All right, and I'll attach that right down to the front of the card. And then we're going to put some liquid glue on the back of our little kitty and attach him down. He is parachuting in. And then we're going to put our sentiments up there. And then I'll pick those up. It really didn't help to actually use the jewel picker for that. <laughs> uh, you could use some reverse tweezers. Those would work fine. Or your fingers if you're not bumbling around too much like I happen to be. But I'm just gluing those straight down. You could, like I said, pop any of this up using some foam tape. But I wanted to show that you don't need to add a lot of bulk. And you'll still get a very pretty card just dropping in to say hi and it also has a couple other little sentiments in this set one says shoot like parachute and then the other one says i'm sorry <laughs> thankfully i don't have to give out cards like that very often <laughs> all right and so there's the panel 
Now this cloud or this mountain is going to go on the inside of our card because you know me, I've got to do something. So I'll just put those mountain tops on there. I am going to have to trim these mountain mountains down just a little bit so they'll fit inside the card base. And I'm going to use some pre-cut card bases by Brutus Monroe. These are slim line. So these measure seven by eight and a half inches and I'm just scoring them at three and a half inches. And then I'll attach this down to the front or to the inside of my card base. I probably should have cut out another mountain to go on the other side, but we're going to ink up our little kitty with some Dusty Concord Distress Oxide ink because those are more formulated for stamping. When I attach this card panel down to the card base, I do notice that there is a little bit of extra at the top, or you could make it at the bottom, but at the top I thought was better, and then I just trimmed that down. It's just a very slight amount. And then I couldn't decide between these two uh, different embellishments from Trinity Stamps. One is the Gold Rush, and then the other is the Royal Velvet Confetti Mix. And so I decided to just use both. I couldn't, I couldn't uh, not use both. And I was very liberal with the amount that I put down. And I don't think I went too overboard, but you know, hey, everybody has a preference. So I like that there are this many on there. It's just kind of fun. I tried to use the rules of threes or odds. In some instances, I only used a couple, but um, I found that this was a lot of fun. And then of course I did have to make a matching envelope. So I pulled out this specialty paper. It's called Patchwork Parchment because I loved the stitching on it. I thought it matched with my little parachute on the parachute stamp set. And we used the slimline die from Trinity Stamps. And here is our envelope. It's so much fun. And the gold kind of brings out the gold inside the card or on the card. But it fits in there so beautifully. And I've also discovered with these that these will fit inside the clear pouches, that the slimline clear pouches that Trinity Stamps carries. So I'll have those linked down below as well. So that is it. If you liked this video, please hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't already done so. Thank you so much for all the love and support that you guys leave. Um, thanks for the thumbs up, the using my affiliate links when you guys do. That is such a great big help to help me produce more videos. And so thanks guys. I will see you very soon in another video. Bye everybody.